All right, I'm back here in Mudbox, and I want to show you another technique that I use, Mudbox 4. That's pretty handy sometimes. Especially, I use it for architectural moldings and other fancy little details that you might want to put on furniture. But the technique that I'm describing is used to export displacement maps. So let me just show you how, what I'm talking about and how to do it. If you come into Mudbox and you just start with a basic plane, and if you hit Shift D a couple times, it'll give you new levels of detail. And we'll go up to level six, which is 409,000 polygons. That's great. Now I'm gonna create a new layer, not a paint layer. Sculpt. New sculpting layer. Then I'm going to take my brush, hold down B, make it bigger. Okay, I want it to mirror on the X axis. There we go. Now you can see that it's going to paint a mirror image right across that X axis, which is great for moldings that are symmetrical. I obviously need a lot more strength on my sculpting. So let's say I wanted to come in here and carve some sort of leaf detail or something. Just using the basic brush. I didn't even adjust any settings on it. Okay, I'm gonna sculpt a little bit here. Then I'll show you what we can do from it with it from there. Okay, some basic sculpting. So say you wanted that detail on a piece of furniture or something like that. Like I showed you in the last video on Mudbox, or one of the videos, you can come in here with this wax tool and kind of flatten things out like this. I like the wax tool. And you'll have to get comfortable with Mudbox and the different tools, which ones you like. And remember, shift smooths smooths out whatever regardless of what tool you're in it'll smooth your model okay so if you haven't used mudbox before i'll just sit here and carve some of this for you because that might be good for you to see just as an example of how the carving works and everything the sculpting so i'm just going to come in here and do some of this sculpting live for you which hopefully is helpful If you hold down Alt, it does the opposite of whatever brush you're doing. So it's actually cutting into the model now instead of kind of adding to it and flattening it. And cut a groove in there. Nice and deep like that. Okay, this is this isn't even a real object, so I don't know why I'm carrying right now. <laughs> so let me just show you what I brought you here to show you. You can actually really easily export this as a displacement map. So you don't even have to export the model with all these many, many polygons. You can just export this as a displacement map or even as a normal map and just apply it onto objects in 3ds Max. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, over here, in your layers panel. We're in layers now. If we go into object list, we can go to the top camera and then you can right click on it and say look through. That will give you a perfectly straight on view of that top view. Okay, we're just gonna look through that top camera and then you can go to viewport filters and you can do depth of field. Oh. That's not what I meant. Screen distance? Yes. <laughs> there we go. And this gives you a, a, displacement map, a displacement map, a perfect displacement map right there. So you can just you can just export this directly as a displacement map. So I actually am going to zoom in here by holding down Alt and panning right with my right button clicked. 
I haven't really gone through all the navigation in here, but that's what I'm doing to zoom in and out. And then you can go into the screen distance. You can hit invert if you want. You can change the white level and the black level. So we actually want it more like, uh, let's see, clip the white level a little bit because, yeah, a little more contrast in it. And then you can just save the 16-bit image just like that. And if you put that as a in a V-Ray displacement modifier in 3ds Max and apply it to something, it's going to be a perfect displacement map. So I just went ahead and saved that map. And that's the fastest way to make a custom displacement map. Really, there's no other easy way to make it unless you actually model this in Max and then render like a Z-depth channel or something to make that kind of displacement map. You can't just really hand paint these in Photoshop because it's just it's impossible it would be impossible to calculate all these gradients and things. So this is an awesome tool that Mudbox offers. And then you can just apply that to geometry in Max and not have to have the high poly object. And you can do the same thing with normal maps. Right there there's a perfect normal map for you. And you could just screen grab that and apply it as a normal map in Max again. So another way to cheat high poly objects, but really only use low poly objects. You get the high poly detail on a low poly object. So that's a cool trick that you can use in Mudbox to add more detail to your furniture once again.